Hi, welcome to the sixth video lecture on developmental aid and national debt. This is the second video lecture of the third module, namely globalization, international trade, development aid and national debt. Now, what do we understand by international aid? Uh, Leon Stikumana, who is heavily influential in on the subject, says the evidence of aid effectiveness remains mixed at best. While individual targeted aid interventions appear to produce positive results, the impact of aid at the macroeconomic level remains limited. Furthermore, reporting on concrete outcomes of aid interventions remain inadequate, thus perpetuating doubts on aid effectiveness. So what he's saying is that the actual evaluation of aid, the actual performance of aid is, you know, is mixed at best, right? There are certain policies that are very well targeted, aid-related aid interventions which seem to work, but their broad general macroeconomic outcome continues to be bleak. Now, what, do, what does aid mean? What does it entail? So aid is basically development aid or international official development assistance is defined as those flows to countries and to territories uh, and to multinational development institutes which are provided uh, by official agencies so that each transaction is administered with the promotion for the promotion of economic development and welfare of developing societies. Right. So this is your basic sort of re uh, definition of uh, uh, developmental aid. It comes from certain agencies or countries or governments to another set of agencies, governments and officials with the express purpose of administering the process of development in these societies. Now, just a sort of uh, overview of how development assistance has increased or you know uh, progressed in different uh, in different countries here there are some examples we uh, on the figure to your left you see afghanistan burundi and burkina faso where you see that the amount of net aid received by afghanistan is far more than Burundi and Burkina Faso and it's not hard to uh, think that uh, to see that this process sort of accelerates in 2000 uh, in 2007-8 and you can think of geopolitical considerations that may be responsible for this change. Now uh, just to sort of give you a brief overview in the decade between 1990 and 2000, international developmental aid doubled, right? Uh, most of it obviously goes to sub-Saharan Africa, Asia and Latin America. However, aid per capita more than doubled between 2000 and 2009 in sub-Saharan Africa. So just a profile of Africa and how a international aid flows have been directed to Africa. Uh, finally, in this overview, you can think of how development aid is growing steadily uh, as a growing sort of industry of aid, uh, reaching 205 billion US dollars in 2005. Uh, the, the share of the social sector uh, rose from 29% to 52%, and debt relief alone. Uh, almost explains 70% of the increase in ODA. So those are some of the broad, uh, some of the broad ways in which international aid movements have progressed and some of the new sort of changes that have happened in the international aid flows. Uh, just in general, what role does aid do in the economic development process of a country? Now, the quantity of aid, even though it's increased significantly in the past few years, remains inadequate relative to the financial needs of the countries. Aid, however, is useful in filling the gap between domestic earnings and, ta and taxation. Uh, you can think of a situation where a poor country, for instance, Ghana, uh, has a very low tax, uh, tax base because not a lot of people earn a lot of money and therefore can contribute to the tax basket. Now, you also know that the same poor country may need a lot of government expenditure in hospitals, schools, roads, 
to make sure the quality of life for its people improves. But since they have a low tax break, their spending is also constrained. Now, international aid provides a way out of this sort of uh, this sort of this trap by increasing the government's earnings or increasing the government's kitty to spend on these projects. Uh, however, in developing countries, the colonial influence hindered growth of in indigenous institutions, uh, you know, like good government, uh, better policies, better institutions. Now, in such a scenario, when international aid comes in, it further weakens the government's capacity to generate economic growth by changing bad institutions and establishing good policies and institutions. So basically, aid can be both good or bad, depending on, uh, you know, the institutions uh, in a given country, how that aid is channeled, what purpose the aid serves, and what that aid is used for. The rest of this presentation would go into details of uh, some of these paradoxes that aid, uh, aid leads to and raise some of the basic questions around the aid economy. Uh, I will end this video presentation here, but as always, I'll urge you to go through the full PowerPoint to understand uh, the answers of some of the questions and the paradoxes that we have raised here. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to email me.